So I grew up in a family that was um, severely um, religious, severely, severely strict. They didn't acknowledge Vatican II. And my grandmother was mentally ill. And so um, there had been a lot of sexual trauma in her life. Also, like probably, who knows when the wound started, generations. And she had a real hatred towards the feminine. And so anyone, you know, as I became a young woman, or even as a little girl, I was shamed for simply being a, a woman. A lot of shame around my body, around just being a woman. If I wore, I'd get in trouble for, you know, even wearing skirts a certain, like, you know, severe stuff, so severe childhood trauma around simply being in a body. Um, it was a sin, I would go to hell if I had any vanity, if I tried to make myself look pretty, if I was even in shape or unhealthy. If I tried to exercise, I would get in trouble like maybe beaten or something, because that was showing that I was vain. Um, so it's been very hard for me to take care of my body when as a child I was told that was a sin. And especially anything around being a woman or sexuality, I was going to go to hell and just horrible, horrible messages. Um, so I had, I had that. And it, it's been a lifelong journey to overcome that. And, um, and then becoming a mother, that helped me a lot. But then I started to have, you know, people in my life who had a lot of trauma around childbirth. And so, you know, a lot of women after they have childbirth, they have their bodies distorted or ripped open or, or things that they can't be put together again very well. And so I also became interested in this work to help women through that. Because you have to remember that this is also your life. You know, there's a time where it's important as a mother that you're there for the child and your body is the child's too when you're breastfeeding and it's a very bonded relationship. And then I think what happens is a lot of women forget about themselves. Our bodies have changed. We may have had um, traumatic experiences during birth and our hormones change and to come back into ourselves and embrace our sexuality when we've gone through such a profound transformation can be really difficult. And while the men have become fathers, there's still, um, there's still something that happens to women that sometimes men can't really understand. And so I'm really passionate about working with women in this area to come back home, to come back into yourself. And no, you're not a maiden any longer, but now you're, you're a woman. You're an enchantress. Now your sexuality is something so much richer than it ever could have been as a young woman in her 20s or before you had this experience. So um, I love to work with couples around that. You know, I love to work with women around that um, to bring them back into their body. Even no matter what it looks like or what, what we're doing, this is a sacred and vessel and it's our birthright to enjoy it sexually, enjoy our pleasure and to connect with our beloved, you know, with our partner, with our husband. It's hard to find our way back. And taking a conscious approach to sacred sexuality allows us to really connect again, to slow down, to not have a goal, but to come back almost like the innocence of children and to find each other again. And so I like to teach a really conscious, playful way for couples to find each other again. And, um, and then your sex life can become really amazing when they're, you know, you get, you get beyond the goals, you get beyond the way it became, and you come back into an innocence of in the moment. And, and when you bring sacredness to it, and you begin to really get in touch with your body, um, opening up all of your chakras and learning how to connect energetically, it becomes really transformative. <laughs>